today's tutorial we are going to discuss subdivision mystigomycogena it's an important class kichidiomycetes students in previous lecture we have seen general classification of fungi modern traits and general terminology which is used to describe fungi in this tutorial we are going to learn general characters of kichidiomycetes classification of kichidiomycetes their occurrence ecological and ecological distribution and economic importance we'll also study thallus organization mode of reproduction and further classification of kichidiomycetes students class kichidiomycetes is an arbitrary group that is it is a sort of false assemblage of fungi having some common feature these members they have uniflagellated or biflagellated juice spores in common then two flagella are present they can be tensile and viplish type or can be of same type their position can be lateral or apical the general structure of these flagella is 9 plus 2 which is also seen in other eukaryotes as far as thallus is concerned it is unicellular or it can be cnosytic filaments these thallai may have rhizoids or may not have rhizoids this class includes 204 genera and 1060 species subdivision mystigomycogena has been classified into four classes and this division this classification is based on the number and type of flagellum then juice spores have single flagellum the class can be kichidiomycetes or hypokichidiomycetes then the position of flagellum is posterior and the type is viplish the class is kichidiomycetes on the other hand in class hypokichidiomycetes the flagellum is anterior in position and the type of flagellum is tensile so on the basis of type and insertion of flagellum these two classes have been created in kichidiomycetes there is one posterior viplish flagellum on the other hand in hypokichidiomycetes the type of flagellum is tensile and the position is anterior in two other classes juice spores have two flagella in class omycetes the posterior flagellum is viplish and anterior flagellum is tensile the most important and unique feature of omycetes is the presence of cellulose in their cell wall in fourth class that is plasmodiophoromycetes both flagella are of viplish type and the thallus shows plasmodial organization the members of class kichidiomycetes are mostly aquatic that means they are found in water they can be saprophytes that is they are saprophytes and they can grow on dead plant materials or on dead animals besides there are some members which grow on algae or on small animals as parasites besides there are few members which are responsible for serious plant diseases in cultivated crops like syncytium and dobiotium which causes black rot of potato physoderma medis which is responsible for brown spot disease of maize elomyces and blastocladella are two members which are frequently used in various research purposes the thallus organization in kichidiomycetes shows some little variation but in general the thallus is of very primitive type 
in some cases it can be unicellular holocarpic can be endobiotic can be monocentric can be apibiotic or polycentric in some only few members the thallus can be multicellular and eucarpic students we all know what holocarpic thallus is in holocarpic thallus the thalli is converted into reproductive structure at the time of reproduction so at one point of time we can have either vegetative thallus or reproductive structure we cannot have vegetative thallus and reproductive structure at the same point of time if these thalli are inside the host they are called endobiotic then they grow outside the host they are called epibiotic when there is only one number of reproductive structure present in the thallus it is monocentric then more than one number of reproductive structures are present it is called polycentric in these diagrams you can see endobiotic thalli or and holocarpic thalli and polycentric thalli in different members of pteridomycetes as for the sexual asexual reproduction is concerned in this class the asexual reproduction takes place by the formation of juice spores these juice spores are motile which is the characteristic feature of this class and these juice spores are produced in juice sporangia mostly these juice sporangia arise from sori in member synchytriasi that is the example synchytrium the whole thallus is converted into prosorus pro means before and sori is is a heap so the thallus is converted into a heap like structure before thallus goes into a sexual reproductive phase here this prothallus divides and give rise to number of sori each sori contains number of juosporangium and these juosporangium produce juospores with flagella in another case which is in polyphagus the thallus functions as prosporangia thallus the whole thallus is converted into prosporangia and from this pro sporangia a uh, proper sporangium is formed and juice spores juice spores are liberated from this sporangia these juice spores they swim in water with their single flagellum they encyst and finally they germinate to give rise to a new thallus sexual reproduction in chytridiomycetes is very interesting and shows different modes of fusion in the whole class there can be copulation of isogamous gametes isolation a uh, copulation of isogamous gamete is the case where two gametes two fusion fusing gametes are of same shape size and behavior this can be seen in synchytria in allomyces neomoniformis and in olpidia on the other hand in allomyces macrogynous there is an isoga isoplanogamic fusion there the two gametes are not of same size and structure there is little difference in male and female gametes female gamete is comparatively less active and larger in size members of monoblepheridales show oogamous type of reproduction where the female gamete is non motile and male gametes as anthrazoids fuse with this stationary large female gamete to give rise to diploid structure in siphonaria variabilis the case is a special and here two vegetative thalli they fuse with each other and this process is called somatogamy the resulting resting spore is diploid in its structure here are some diagrams to explain you different types of sexual reproduction in this diagram here you can see fusion of two thalli this is the this is showing sexual reproduction in siphonaria variabilis 
in these diagrams we can see the number of isogametes they are fusing with each other and this is the example of anomyces moniliformis in this example here rhizophyllidium another member of chytridiomycetes showing the fusion of two gametes giving rise to formation of zygotic resting sporangium here you can see isoplanogametes of that means that all gametes are of same shape and size and they are also same in behavior this type of fusion or reproduction we can see in synchytrium or family synchytriaceae this is very advanced type of reproduction sexual reproduction which is seen in monobliferula tyleri this is oogamous type of reproduction here you can see the female gamete is stationary and it is larger in size the male gamete is smaller and is motile so these are the various modes of sexual reproduction we can see in class chytridiomycetes class chytridiomycetes has been further classified into orders there are four orders in this class class chytridians have no true mycelium but it can have rhizoids or rhizomycelium in harpochytridium chytridians mycelium are present but sexual reproduction is not known when sexual reproduction is present and there is fusion of planogametes and the zoospores have nuclear cap clear nuclear cap this is the class blastoplateals their sexual reproduction is very clear the sexual reproduction takes place by fusion of planogametes zoospores have clear nuclear cap and after the fusion resistant sporangia is formed while in monobliferidals there is sexual reproduction with motile male gametes and non motile female gametes and there is no formation of resting sporangium so this was a general account of chytridiomycetes students for further reading you can consult books by Alexopoulos and Mims. The title of book is Introductory Mycology and an Introduction to Mycology by S. R. Merutra and Anija. You can also go through these websites for further readings. Yes, students, your doubts, queries are all, always welcome, and you can ask your doubts in uh, and queries any time. Thank you very much.